Everybody warm and toasty this morning? Well, the Lord gave us uh, snow in a different way this morning, didn't he? Would you stand with us as we turn our minds and our hearts to our Father? We are a moment, you are forever, Lord of the ages, God before time. We are a baby, you are eternal, love everlasting. us redeemed mighty to say you are the love song we'll sing forever bowing before you blessing your day holy holy Lord God almighty worthy is the Lamb who was saved Highest praises, honor, and glory be unto your name. Be unto your name. Holy, holy. Good morning and welcome to Bethsaida. It's good to see you this morning. If you're a guest with us in person or in online, we're just so glad to have you. If you are a guest, my name is Brad Baum, the pastor here. It's my joy and privilege to be with you. If you're in the house, there's a blue card there in your pew rack. Uh, or if you just have prayer requests or any, need any information, just fill this out and drop it in one of the boxes. If you're online, if you just go to the website, about us and then click contact us there's a little google form and we will get with you but we're glad to have you here and glad to see you in person again praise the lord uh and so uh we're glad to be back on the other side of covid uh pray for janice and her parents they're not on the other side of covid yet uh but just pray for them and many others that are sick uh in our families and in our area and so we're just so glad to have you and so let me just remind you, we again, New Year, uh, we exist to see Christ change lives, okay? We're still in the business for that, to help you grow in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's pray. We see lives changed in the days and the weeks and the months ahead, and that God would move in a mighty way. And also on Wednesday night, we've started a new series <coughs> uh, Join us in person or online on the Lord's Prayer. And what we're doing is taking just every little <laughs> piece of that Lord's Prayer. There are seven petitions there. And we're, going, we're taking each one just piece by piece and bringing that out. There's a lot more in there than you really realize. Kind of like remember when we looked at the, the attitude, Beatitudes, there's a lot more than you realize just in those, just one little phrase or one little sentence. So that's what we're doing on Wednesday night. And so uh, we just welcome you to join us for that. And we just want to pray that God would move this morning and speak to us, meet you at your deepest point of need, whatever that is, 
Praise God, God knows what it is. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Matt Wyvern if he would just lead us in prayer. And uh, thank you, Brother Matt. Well, we just thank you most of all, Father, for your love for us, Father, that mm. while we were yet sinners, you sent your son to die for us, Lord. And Lord, that's such an amazing feat, and I pray that we never get over it, Father. May we live each day, Father, never forgetting mm. what it meant for Christ to die for us, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to come into the <coughs> service today, Father, be with Brother Sam and the band as they lead us, Father, and preparing our hearts. I pray that we'll clean everything out of our hearts, Father, and our minds. And that we'll be solely focused on worshiping and praising your name, Father, because you deserve it. And, Lord, we just also ask for you, Brother Brad, as he brings your word to us, just fill him with the Holy Spirit, give him the words you want him to speak, Father. Just hide him behind the cross. Help him be bold and courageous to speak your words to us, Lord. And, Father, most of all, help us to be receptive to your words. Help us to understand what you have for us. Help us to take it in. Help us to apply it to our lives. And then, Lord... Help us to take it out, not just one day a week, Father, here at church, but every day of the week that people will see Jesus shining through us, Father, and that we'll be spreading the gospel everywhere we go. And, Lord, we do lift up the ones who couldn't be here today for sickness or illness, whatever the case may be. Father, pray you just be with them, help them to recover and get well, because we know you are the great physician, and all you have to do is say it, and it will be done. And, Lord, again, just come into this service, and may your will be done, and may you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, would you stand with us? Alas, and if I say this morning church amen there by faith I receive my sight have you seen the Lord Jesus on the cross for your sins when you see him on the cross for your sins I don't see how you can see that and not change you whoever rebattled 
every heartbreak and every circumstance I believe that you are my fortress oh you are my portion you are my hiding place I believe you are the way the truth the light I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe through every blessing, through every promise, through every breath I take. I believe that you are provider, oh, you are protector. You are the one I love. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe. Yes, you are. And it's a new horizon, and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that are new. And all my fears and doubts, they can all come to, because they can't stay long when I'm here with you. on you you meet me here today mercies that are new oh, all my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way the truth the light fears and downs, they can all come true, because they can't stay long, when I believe you are the way, the truth, the life, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. Yes, you are. Amen. The way, the truth, the life. Amen. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle For you have never failed me yet. From 
Jehovah still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never fail me yet. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence, you never fail. That's right. The promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence, never fail me yet. Church, praise the Lord. You may be seated, church. Amen. Thank you, Brother Sam and band, for leading us uh, to the throne of God and reminding of us of God's faithfulness. All right, kids, time for Children's Church. All righty. All righty. Thank you all. All righty. They're coming.
All righty. Pray for them. Pray for our kids. And again, uh, just to remind you, you can give in the house. You can give online, text give, put it in the mailbox or drop by the office again. Thank you all uh, last year for faithfully giving. And uh, praise the Lord for how you'll be faithful to give this year so we can do ministry. If you do need an outline, uh, Brother Matt or Scott will get you one. Just raise your hand and they will get you one uh, to you as we're in, back in this series. Uh, we started the first Sunday and haven't been back since. So, uh, so we're going to dive into it and look at uh, this uh, triple threat temptation. So let's go Lord in prayer and just ask God to speak. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we again just adore you. We just thank you for your faithfulness. That we've experienced this morning. We've experienced your mercy and your grace. And we didn't deserve it. But you freely gave it and we thank you, Lord. Lord, we, we're thankful that we can just gather in person and gather online with our brothers and sisters this morning. And Lord, I pray you would just meet with us, whether in person and online. Lord, I pray those that are watching online right in their home right now, you just invade their lives, invade those houses of worship. Take away all distractions, Lord, and captivate our thoughts. Lord, help me only say what you want me to say. Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit and pray your Spirit would move and work. And Lord, we know it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, on the second we started uh, this series, Triple Threat Temptation, and we looked at the first temptation of Jesus. And we're looking at temptation through this series. Remember Adam and Eve, they gave in to appetite. They saw the fruit. They also gave in to the temptation of approval because they wanted to gain wisdom and to be like God. Remember Esau, he gave in to the temptation of appetite uh, and gave up his birthright for instant gratification of some stew. Samson struggled with appetite for lost women. He also had a, a desire to prove that he was the strongest there. The rich young ruler gave in to appetite. Jesus said, hey, sell everything and follow me, and he wouldn't give up all his possessions. And so in this series we're seeing there's, there's three attacks of temptation that Jesus has in the wilderness, and we face those also. And many times they come into three major areas, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life that we all deal with. But through this series, you can see how Jesus faced temptation, and you and I face the same temptations too. Maybe not like Jesus here, but in the same categories, all of us in the house face temptation. The question is, how do you and I deal with it? Now, let me just remind you what we talked about on the, the first Sunday. We talked about appetite, and how appetite is the desire to want more and be self-sufficient. That's the temptation that America bites into. <laughs> uh, I'm self-sufficient. I always want more. I never have enough toilet paper in the pandemic. I never have enough of this or that. And you got it right now. People are stocking up on everything and everything. I never have enough. And what did the devil tell Jesus? Turn these stones into what? Bread. What did Jesus say? He quoted Deuteronomy 8, 3, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Today we want to talk about this second temptation, which is going to deal with approval. We're going to look at approval. This is the second temptation that hits Jesus, but also hits us. Approval is this. Approval is the desire 
to be accepted, approved, and liked. Now, man, we deal with this one straight up, all of us, big time many times. Approval is the desire to be accepted, approved, and liked. We're going to be in Matthew 4, verses 5 through 7, and let's look at what the text says. It says, Then the devil took him to the holy city, which would have been Jerusalem, and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, here comes that phrase again, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give the angels orders concerning you, and they will support you with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus told him, It is also written, Do not test the Lord your God. Now again, this temptation deals with approval. Approval is the idea that I will never do enough, I will never accomplish enough to be accepted. I always got to do more to be accepted. Now let me remind you these three basic truths that we talked about, temptation. Number one, it's not on the outline, but just to remind you, you should know these. God does not tempt us. He might put you through a test, but He does not tempt you. With lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. But God does allow us to be tempted. But with the temptation, what? As 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there is a way of escape. There is a way out. When temptation comes knocking on the door, when the temptation of approval comes knocking on your door and my door, there is a way of escape. You and I just got to learn to look for it. And so today I want to talk to you about three facts about temptation of approval and that I want to really hammer on some application. Because I think approval is a big one that we deal with. I don't care who you are. We all sometimes are more concerned what other people think of us than what God thinks. So let's get going. Number one, Satan tries to get Jesus to do a miracle on demand so that he will become popular. He says, I want you to do this miracle. And Satan, remember Satan, the word means adversary. Satan is the one who opposes God's plans, God's programs, and God's agenda, and he actually opposes God's people. The word devil comes from the Greek word diabolos, which means he is the diabolical defamer who delights in slandering God's name. You actually find that word 34 times in the Bible. Now what happens here? The devil takes Jesus, takes him to the what? Pinnacle of the temple. Takes him to the highest point, which at that time would have been on the southeastern corner of the temple, which would have been on the royal porch, which would have been on Solomon's porch. And from there, looking down, he would have been able to look down in the Kidron Valley. And if you've been over there, it's like a 450-foot drop. It's a pretty good drop there. And what does Satan tell him to do? Hey, you just need to jump. Now, why did this happen? Well, one rabbinical tradition says when the King Messiah reveals himself, he will come and stand on the roof of the holy place. They believed that the Messiah would stand on the roof of the holy place. And he would introduce himself miraculously as the national leader. They really believed that. So Satan is saying, hey man, just jump, Jesus, man. Jump, ask those angels to give you charge, and everybody will believe you're a miracle. He says, if you are the Son of God, come on now, if you really are the Son of God, you'll do this. And if you do it, man, you can become popular. Just call on the angels, man. If you'll jump, those angels will be there for you. And then everybody will see that you are the miracle worker. And now what he's trying to get him to do is to shortcut what God has called him to do as far as the Messiah. He said, man, if you'll just jump, all of a sudden you can start your messianic reign right now. You don't have to go through the humiliation and the suffering and the death on the cross. Man, you can be Messiah right now. Just jump, call on those angels. The Bible says the angels will be there for you. 
He said, man, you'll become popular. Everybody will want to follow you. You'll have millions of views on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. Everybody will be ready to follow you now. But what did Jesus do? He set, decided to ride in on a borrowed colt on Palm Sunday and go to the cross for you and I. See, many people give in to temptation today. And they've been given into temptation from the beginning of time approval. This week we read in Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel. Let me read to you verse 4. It says this, And they said, Come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky. And then, next phrase says, Let's make a name for ourselves. Like, man, we're going to be famous. We can build this big, tall tower, and we will make a name. We will be known all over the world. Many people will sacrifice their marriage, their family, their convictions, everything for five minutes of fame today. They'll sell their soul to become famous. Do you know 25% of our kids and teenagers think they're going to become famous? 25%. The world's going to be crushing when they find out everybody does not become famous. But with this world that we live in, people will do crazy things to gain approval. Let me just share with you a few. 22-year-old Danish YouTuber Albert Dryland. Thousands of people watching him on YouTube. Filmed while he was climbing in the Italian Alps. But he fell 656 feet to his death while trying to impress people filming going up the Italian Alps. Another guy by the name of YouTuber Tor Eckhoff. He was known for doing extreme videos. He said, man, I'm going to shoot this video while I'm out on a frozen lake. Well, frozen lake gave away. And he filmed his death. Same thing happened to a guy going up Mount Fuji in Japan. Slipped and fell to his death. You want to know another crazy one? Husband and wife, young couple. Thought they would do something crazy because they weren't getting enough views. He held up a phone book in front of him. And then, I don't know how some, they thought they had tried and it worked. She pulled out a big pistol, shot him. Killed right there on internet. 30 people watching and his three-year-old. Man, does the devil tempt people with approval. This is an approval-driven culture. And we've always dealt with approval. But now it's even more. And so many times, whether you're an adult or teenager or young adult, so many times we're trying to impress people that we go to school with or press people that we go to work with. Satan tried to get Jesus to do the same thing. Second fact, we've got to move on. Satan misquotes, misinterprets, and twists Scripture for his benefit. He misquotes, he misinterprets, and he twists. He quotes Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12 here. Satan knows the Bible, he just knows how to twist it. Huh. And so let's read actually what Psalm 91, let's look at it, and you also look at what Satan says. But let's read it. It says, For he will give his angels orders concerning you, to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Now what does Satan leave out? Leaves out a whole phrase there. To protect you in all your ways. He ignores the context of the passage. He actually takes out a whole phrase that is very important. 
and then makes it say what he wants it to say. See, Satan twists Scripture to tempt Jesus. See, what Satan does is he finds carnal Christians and he will twist the Bible and shoot it into your heart and get you to buy into a lie. Now, Jesus, who is the Word of God, knew, hey, you're misusing God's Word. He knew exactly what he was doing. Now, how does Satan misinterpret Scripture in our lives? Let me give you some examples. Devil will say, God wants you to be happy. He wants you to have a lot of things. You should have this and this and this or whatever it is. God tells you in His Word He wants you to be holy and live a life pleasing to Him. The devil will say, well, Jesus came to save the oppressed due to all the oppressors in our culture now. No, God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins to defeat death, hell, and the grave. Why? Because we're all oppressed, because we're born with a sin nature from our father, Adam, and we have no way of getting to heaven unless we come through Jesus Christ and the cross. See, we've got to come to a place and believe that Jesus is the only way that we sing about. And the only way we get to heaven is through repentance of sins, that change of mind which leads to a change of attitude, behavior, and lifestyle. And it only comes when you put your faith and trust in Christ. Say, all right, Lord, I'm ready to follow you. I'm going to call on you. I'm going to live for you. But many in our culture have bought in, no, just live whatever you want to. Pray a prayer. Say the name of Jesus one time and you're good. That's the devil telling you you're approved before god if you just do this little thing you just walk that aisle one time and you'll be fine now live whatever way you want to it's nothing about the bible you prayed a little prayer you said the name of jesus one time and you're fine that's the devil telling you a lie that you're approved by god by some religious exercise that you did instead of repentance and faith. How else does he do this? Well, he tells us, oh, you don't need church. You don't need brothers and sisters in Christ. You don't need to be with one another. Except God created us to do life together, to be in community, to, to provoke one another to love and good works to encourage one another, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You're like, well, with COVID, there's some sick, but still, you, don't need, you still need to be part of the house of God, whether you're online or in person. But a lot of people have been picked off through this whole pandemic. They haven't been in church, hadn't watched church, hadn't worshipped, hadn't read their Bible, because they've bought into a lie that, oh, I can live whatever way I want to now. The devil tells you success in life is measured by what you do. Jesus says, man, I've come to give you life. And that you might have life, what, more abundantly. That you might have purpose and meaning life. See, Satan's going to misquote, misinterpret, twist Scripture to get you to trip up. Number three, Jesus defeats Satan with Scripture. He uses Scripture. And he quotes Deuteronomy 6.16, let's look at what Deuteronomy 6.16 says. says, do not test the Lord your God as you tested him at Massa. Now what happened at Massa? Exodus 17, Israel grumbled and were complaining to Moses over the lack of water and they believed that God was not with them because they were thirsty. See, Jesus was tempted by Satan. You, you just need to test God here. You just need to test Him. And you just need to jump and demand that miracle. You, you just need to do that. Can we test God today? Oh, yeah. We can test God. Israel tested God. Give me an example. Can't think of many, but I'll give you one. Give you a couple. Let's say you're a diabetic. You need medicine every day. But you're like, hey, I'm going to trust God. God's going to take care of me every single day. You hadn't got a word from God. You didn't get healed by God. I'm just going to trust God. I'm not going to take any more medicine. 
because God's going to take care of me. He, that's testing God. You got heart medication you got to take to be able to live. But I'm just going to trust God, and God hadn't healed you, and God hadn't given you a word. He just, I'm just going to, he's just going to, like, geez, just, just jump. Well, that's what you're doing with God. And we're not to test God. We're to trust God. Now, how do we deal with this when those temptations come? What's Satan do here? He lied. What do you fight the lie with? The Word of God. You've got to know the Word of God. Because he's going to twist it on you. He's good at it. He's been around since the garden. He knows how to twist Scripture. If he can quote Scripture here to Jesus, he'll quote it to you. Just going to twist it a little. So let's look at some application. How do we deal with this? How do we deal with this? Let's look at number one. Jesus was despised and rejected by all people. And this is a good part, so that we might be accepted by God. The temptation is to prove, I want to be accepted. How can you be accepted? It's through Jesus Christ. He was despised and rejected so that you might be accepted by God. What's amazing is, he was on the cross, <coughs> and he took a lot of abuse. If you remember, he was on the cross, and if you read Matthew 27, they were like saying the same thing that, the devil just told him, if you're the Son of God, just come on down. Call on God to save you. You had all the religious leaders mocking him. Like, if you really are the Son of God, prove yourself. I mean, he's on the cross and he faced the temptation of approval. Come on, Jesus, if you're really God, come on, show us. devil does the same thing with you and I. If you really are, come on, do it. Jesus told his disciples before he left, he said, hey, you need to understand, if the world hates you, understand it hated me before it hated you. You need to understand this. And you, you teenagers, you young adults, you need to understand this. If you haven't learned this, you need to get this. Everybody in the world will not like you. And everybody will not accept you. And if you decide to live according to this, a whole lot of people will not accept you. But you need to understand, Jesus was despised. He was rejected <laughs> so that you and I might be accepted. Don't forget that. Second, temptation is inevitable. So turn to Jesus when you face it. Temptation is inevitable. It's inevitable. <laughs> You're liable to get tempted before you get, even get out of the house of God today. I'm serious. So turn to Jesus. Why do we need to turn to Jesus? You need to understand, Jesus was tempted just like we are. But he never sinned. Jesus can sympathize with you. He knows what you're going through. That's the amazing thing, that we have this example. We can see how Jesus was tempted. And then we're like, oh, wow, I'm tempted the same way. He can understand. Let me read to you a couple of verses. You write down these references and maybe look at them later. Hebrews 2.18 says this, For since he himself has suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help those who are tempted. <laughs> Praise God. That's Hebrews 2.18. Hebrews 4.15 and 16 says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been what tempted in every way as we are, but don't miss the next phrase, yet without sin. He was tempted, but he did not sin. We're tempted, but many times give in to it. But then it says, verse 16, Therefore let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. See, when you're tempted, where do you go? You go run to Jesus, go run to the throne boldly, and you can find grace and mercy in your time of testing and temptation. 
See, that's the way out. Number three, you must realize the importance of the Bible in your life. You must realize the importance of the Bible. Jesus, in this temptation, these three temptations, he quotes three verses from Deuteronomy. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you read Deuteronomy? Number two, how many of you actually know where Deuteronomy is? And how many of you have memorized a verse from Deuteronomy? If you don't know where it is, it's the fifth book in the Bible. If you're long in our reading plan, you would already memorize some verses from Deuteronomy because we memorized the Shema last year in Deuteronomy 6. See, many times we give in to temptations because we don't have a good handle on the Word of God. Donald, Donald Gray Barnhouse said, When you're tempted by the flesh, run away. You're going to be tempted by the devil. So he says, stand up and fight with the Word of God in your hand, the sword of the Spirit, and then use the shield of faith, which is able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil one. And he says, as far as the world, do not be conformed to its mold, but be conformed to the mold of Christ. How do we become conformed to the mold of Christ? You've got to be in God's Word. You've got to engage in God's Word. You've got to put some of God's Word in your heart. That is the only way, because you're going to get tempted. I'm going to get tempted. And if you and I don't read the Word, engage the Word, put the Word of God in our hearts, spend some time listening to the Word of God, you will give in to temptation. You will buy into the lie because you'll think it's pretty good, and it'll sound really good. Why do you think so many of our churches have bought into social justice and woke theology? Because they don't know the Word of God. And what sounds good, but it has nothing to do with the Word of God. Amen. So you got to get in the book if it's going to get in you. you got to stick with the book, and it'll fix, finally stick to you like Velcro. Number four, stop allowing the voices of people to matter more than the voice of God. Now that's a mouthful right there. <clears throat> stop allowing the voices of people to matter more than the voice of God. Too many people are listening to the wrong voices. We're listening to social media. We're listening to the world. Many times, to be honest with you folks, we can't hear the... You know why we can't hear the voice of God? Because huh. all we can hear is the noise of all the world. And we haven't figured out how to get still and know that He is God. Some of you may still be trying to impress or gain approval from your dad and your mom or a friend or a coach. Or maybe you had this bad life experience and you're still hearing those voices of those people. Maybe they put you down, maybe said something about you, and you're still trying to gain approval because you're trying to still get up on that. And so many times, we're listening to voices of people that don't even matter. Remember Elijah? Defeated 850 prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. Great victory, and then it rains. And one woman by the name of Jezebel says something, criticizes him, and what does he do? Runs and hides. If we're not careful, 99 people can tell you, man, you're doing a great job. And one person will criticize you, and you listen to the one person instead of the 99. See, our worth and value is not based upon what other people think. So let's... Try to listen to the voices of God more than the voices of others. Now let me just go ahead and say it so you don't take this out of context. There's some godly brothers and sisters in our family here that many times might give you a word of wisdom that you might need to heed. You hear what I'm saying? What I'm saying about people, many times... 
I'm talking about people in the world. Number five, don't seek the applause of man, but the praise of God. Don't seek the applause of man, but the praise of God. When you give in the temptation of approval, it's about what are people thinking of me? Let me just say this, you that are in school, high school, college. Let me just say this, and you adults know, many times we grew up in school and sometimes we would do things to do what? Fit in and gain approval. Let me just say this. And probably a lot of the adults here would say yes to this. Most of the time we're trying to appease people that age, and you'll find out later in life, why in the world did I waste my time on those people? Why did I worry about what they thought? Look at their life now. And I was so concerned about them. See, you need to understand, I'm only to live for Christ. Seek the praise of God. You know why? He loves you and wants the best for you. He, he really does. So seek His approval and nobody else's. Number six, if you don't get any others, you need to get this one. You have nothing to prove and nobody to impress. Got nothing to prove and nobody to impress. See, this temptation of approval is like, I'll never be enough. I don't measure up. And we give in to shame. You remember Adam and Eve in Genesis 2? says what? They were naked and had what? No shame. What happened after the fall? They were ashamed. See, many times we buy into the lie about God that God doesn't love me unless I do a lot of things for God. You need to understand, you can't do anything to earn His love. He freely gives it. And you can freely receive it. You cannot earn it. You cannot buy it. And you can't earn love from other people either. You and I have nothing to prove and nobody to impress. When all comes down, there's only one audience that you need to live for and there's only one audience that I need to live for. And it's the audience of Jesus Christ. That's it. If you and I live for the audience of Jesus Christ, you know what? We'll be in good relationship with one another. We'll love one another, encourage one another, support one another, all those things. Number seven, quickly. Don't be led by the crowd, but live by godly convictions from the Word of God. Don't be led by the crowd, but live by godly convictions. Joshua 24, verse 15 says this. But if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, I love what Joshua says here. Choose for yourselves today which you will worship. The gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living. He says it's for me and my family or it's for me and my household. Huh. We will what? Worship and serve the Lord. you got to decide who you're going to live for. you got to decide... Whose approval are you going to seek? Are you going to seek the approval of the Father, or are you going to seek the approval of others? See, approval is the temptation, the desire, to think you've always got to be accepted, approved, and liked by every single person. And we all deal with this, folks. All of us. Jesus faced it. You need to understand, this is not the only time Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Jesus faced temptation through people and circumstances. He even faced temptations through his disciples. Remember one time he told Peter, he said, get behind me, Satan. 
But let me give you another example. Mark 1. If you study that passage, read that passage, Jesus one day, hey, he healed this, un, this man of an unclean spirit, and he was doing a bunch of other ministry, and he was preaching and healing. Then he goes to Peter's mother-in-law's house. She's sick, heals her, heals many others. Long day of ministry. Verse 35, he gets up early in the morning, goes spend time with the Father. All of a sudden, then Peter and a lot of people come looking for him. Verse 37, Peter says, everyone is looking for you. And it's like Peter saying, hey, Lord, you need to understand, there's a crowd back there. The band's playing. Sam and them are warmed up. Man, we got a crowd. Man, we are going to be famous, going to have notoriety. We're going to make millions. That's what Peter said, man, man it's going to be awesome. Listen to what Jesus said. Let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. That is why I've come. Now can you see Peter's, I love to see Peter's, it's like, what Lord? We've got all this approval here, man. We've got all this f- fame here. Man, we're going to be great, Lord. See, Jesus didn't give into the temptation of approval. He didn't jump off the temple. The short court, God's plan. He didn't do it to have instantaneous fame and popularity. Approval's coming, and it's going to, that temptation is going to knock at your door. It may knock at your door before the day's over. The question is are you going to find your approval in the Lord? Or will you try to find it in others and your flesh? Please don't go there. That's a dead end street. Look to Jesus. Temptation will come, but look to Him. Find your approval in Him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just do come to You. And we just thank You, Lord, that You can identify with us and identify with all our temptations. For some, Lord, the temptation right now is to reject Christ. You've been talking to them, and they've been putting it off. If that's you, I encourage you to call on the name of Jesus right now. You can do it in person. You can do it online. If you're by yourself, pray it out loud. Talk to Him. If you're with a group, pray silently. God will hear you. You're like, Brad, I don't even know what to do. Decide to do business with God. Just say, pray something like this. If you mean it, talk to God. If you don't, God's not into games. But just say, dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've blown it. Broken your laws and sinned against you. But God, I really do believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins, was buried in the tomb, but rose again on the third day and is alive and living today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, right now to come into my heart, forgive me of all my sins, and be my Lord, Master, and Savior from this moment on. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, calling me, and accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. All eyes closed, nobody looking around. Anybody maybe pray that prayer with me? If you did, kind of raise your hand. Or if you're online, you did, just kind of comment and let us know. We'd love to encourage you. Let me pray for every Christ follower. Lord, you know where we stand. Lord, you know whether we've been trying to impress people. And given in to this temptation of approval. Lord, if we have, Lord, may we seek forgiveness. Lord, may you give us some verses to stand on. That we might realize that our hope is in you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just move in this invitation. In Jesus' name, amen.
We're just going to have a time of invitation. You may want to come and pray. You may have a burden. You may be struggling with something. You may just need the Lord to want to come and pray. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, that's all we ask you to do is be obedient to Him. His Spirit's here. He's spoken. Now we just need to be obedient. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Brother Sam and the band will lead us. I'll be down front. You do what the Lord tells you. to follow you. I have decided to follow Jesus to follow Jesus no turning back no one follows you will you go with Jesus most of the time we won't we're like hey I want to follow the crowd but will you follow Jesus let me give you one verse because I was thinking I didn't give them a verse to kind of hang their hat on when someone comes and they want to throw you the guilt on you they want to throw different things on you just remember Romans 8, 1. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Once you're in Christ Jesus, you're accepted. doesn't matter what the people say. They can heap all kinds of guilt. You're in Christ Jesus. So it'll come. Hang your hat on some of those verses. Okay? Love you folks. Pray you all have a great week. Again, if you're free Wednesday, in person or online, join us as we go through the Lord's Prayer. Amen? Amen. Let's worship Brother Sam. Thank you, Brother Brad. We are grateful that you're feeling better, sir. You're back with us. Amen. Life is over. To walk on God's list to shore. Fly away. Come on, church.
gonna fly. We're gonna fly. That's right. We're gonna get out of here.